Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to uh, demonstrate how to uh, calculate the moment of inertia for a system of masses. So what we're looking at here is we have this two kilogram mass and then here's another two kilogram mass, another two kilogram mass, another two kilogram mass and they're connected imagine by these very very light uh, rigid uh, objects here, here, here and here. And imagine that the distance basically center to center of each of these is six meters this way, six meters this way. Now, I'm just making up a configuration. Don't worry about the actual numbers. I made up uh, numbers that would make the math kind of easy to go through, um, you know, while we walk through this. So in the center of this is a coordinate system, X, Y, Z, three-dimensional coordinate system. And, and what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the moment of inertia of this system about each of these axes, about the X axis, about the Y axis, and about the Z axis, right? So uh, what we're looking for is IX, IY, and IZ. All right, so to get these, we have to know what moment of inertia is. So if you've watched my introduction to moment of inertia, hopefully you've seen this. Uh, moment of inertia is equal to the sum of all the MR squareds on a body. So each object will have a mass and a radius squared, mass, radius squared, mass, radius squared, and so forth. Then we just add them all up. So IX moment of inertia of this system about the x-axis. So imagine that this system is free to rotate about an axis that looks like this. The r's that we need are the distance to the axis of rotation. So you know that would be like this distance, this distance, this one, and this one. And we're six meters from here to here so the, the distance for each one to the axis rotation is going to be three meters. So uh, I'll just start here. This guy's moment of inertia about the x-axis is going to be 2 kilograms times the distance to the axis squared, 3 meters, right? And that's being squared. So that's good for this guy. Then I'll go ahead and do this guy. Again, 2 kilograms times 3 meters squared. Next one is this animal. 2 kilograms times 3 meters squared. And then the last one same mass, two kilograms, same distance, three meters squared. Sorry, I'm running off the page there. And then we would just uh, multiply this, or I'm sorry, add this all up. So right here, uh, three squared is nine times two is 18. So this is gonna be 18 kilogram meters squared plus, now this is symmetric, these are all the same. You know, we're gonna have another 18 kilogram meter squared and then another 18 kilogram meter squared and then another 18 kilogram meter squared. At this point you're probably asking yourself could I just have uh, multiplied it by four and the answer is yes. We could just use the symmetry of the problem and said the moment of inertia of this mass is the same as this is the same as this is equal to two times three squared and just multiplied. So anyway let's see what do we get when we add these all up. So I think that comes to 72 kilogram meter squared. By the time we do that, I, what I did is 20, 20, 20, 20 uh, adds to 80, and then I subtract the 2, 2, 2, 2. All right, so there's the moment of inertia about the x-axis. All right, now let's talk about moment of inertia about the y-axis. So now, imagine that this thing is free to rotate about this axis. Then the distances that we would need would be this distance, which is three meters, this distance, three meters, three meters, three meters. So because of the example I made up, all the symmetry that we have going on, the moment of inertia about the y-axis is the same as about the x-axis. Each term is going to be two times three meters squared. So I'm going to go ahead and just put 18 kilo, oops, I'm sorry, not 18, 72 kilogram meter squared because of the symmetry of the problem. Now again, had I made up an example where maybe this was say 10 meters, then it would be different. The radius we would need in that case would be five and, and so forth, but I wanted to keep this example kind of short. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do moment of inertia about the Z axis. So now <clears throat> imagine that this system can rotate about the z axis here. So it's, you know, you got to imagine the rotation like this. The distances that we're going to need now is going to be that distance, that distance, that distance, that distance here. So 
that distance we're going to have to calculate. Right? So from here to here is 3. Whoops, I can draw that a little better. From here to here is 3 meters. Um, from here to here is 3 meters. So what we need is that distance right there now. That's the distance we need for moment of inertia about the z-axis. And really what we need is that distance squared. Because moment of inertia is mr squared. Well, that distance squared is going to equal 3 squared plus another 3 squared. So that distance squared, this is 9, 9. That distance squared is 18 square meters. We could also write r equals the square root of 18, if, that, if you like that better. Right. So now, when I do the moment of inertia calculation, this guy's moment of inertia about this axis is going to be the mass, 2 kilograms, times square root of 18 meters squared. So I'm just going to write times 18 meters squared plus same mass, same distance, um, 2 times, or 2 kilograms times. 18 square meters plus same mass 2 kilograms times same distance squared 18 square meters last one 2 kilograms times 18 square meters whoops so again you know the reason that we have these squareds here and down here these already are squared right if you want you could put square root of 18 whatever that is and square it and put that in that place and it'd be fine so the moment of inertia here, let's see, what are we going to have here? Um, <clears throat> kind of studying this, looks like this is going to be pretty well exactly double what the other one is, I believe. 2 times, let's see, 2 times 20 would be, this would be 40, 80, um, this would be 160, and then I'm just going to subtract off 2, 4, 6, 8. Um, 152, I think I get out of that. 152 kilogram meters squared. I'm just going to double check that again here. So um, I just approximated that at 20. So it's 40, 80, 160 total minus 2. Actually, no, that's minus 4, 4, 4, and 4. So that's going to be minus 16. So that's going to be um, 144. That's what I thought it would be double. So 144. Whoops. Got my symmetry thing on. Don't need that. Sorry about this. Got to get that darn thing off, and I forgot how to do it. There it is. OK. We're going to get rid of that, call it 144 kilogram meters squared. So sorry about the end there, but I'm just going to leave this as it is. It's perfectly fine, I think. Um, again, moment of inertia, how you calculate it, it's m times r squared, m times r squared. In an example like this, the r is going to depend on um, distance to the axis of rotation. So about the y-axis, we need this distance about the for rotation about the x-axis we need this distance and for rotation about the z-axis we need this distance now another thing that I have ignored here is the geometry of these um, it turns out that's not going to be important for this example I'll look at uh, examples later where it is hope this video helps with the calculations have a great day